thank you Adela and uh, a big official welcome from my side to all of you present at the last of our Teaching the Future uh, meetings. Wait just a second. I... Sorry for that. So again, thank you uh, for joining the, the last of our Teaching the Future in Romanian Predau Vitor online course STEAM at the Gymnasium International Summer Meetings. This is still Anasta Matescu talking, part of the Asociația TechSub team for six years now, where I work with and for amazing and inspiring teachers like you. What we would like to happen in this meeting, a short agenda. I will start by introducing you um, a little bit about what we do at Asociația TechSub, mostly for those of you who couldn't be present live in our first three meetings. So thank you for the patience of those who already know us. And after, I will quickly give the floor and as much time as I can to our today's awesome guest from Kodor Dojo. And by the end of this session, we hope you will be inspired by her, enjoy our time together, and of course, leave this meeting with at least one idea of an activity of, or resource to do in the classroom to bring to your students. Asociația TechSoup in a nutshell. We are a non-profit organization and we work to make technology accessible, understandable and familiar to change makers in our society. Thus, our work is divided in two main directions, with and for civil society and STEAM education. In our two main research-based educational programs, with and for educators and their students, Predau Vitor, Teaching the Future, and Andreptar Digital, Digital Handbook, we try to equip them with pedagogy, digital skills, and applied computer science competences. We are proud to say that we have reached a community of over 20,000 teachers that use digital tools and skills to build a better educational experience in the classroom. In trying to support as best and diverse as we, can, as we can, this amazing community, we also have built and offer teaching materials, a podcast, and regular community meetings. All these programs and resources wouldn't be possible without this small team of seven people, the Asociația TechSoup core team members. Of course, there are many other friends and supporters which, which just wouldn't and couldn't fit in only one picture. Coming back to why we are here. As I started, this is the third of the, this is the last actually, uh, of our meetings we have planned for our summer Teaching the Future online course. This course is possible and I will take again a minute to give thanks for the support of the Romanian American Foundation, Societe Generale Global Solution Center, Europe Code Week, Coder Dojo, and the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And now, Dear Sonia, thank you for taking the time to share all about Coder Dojo to our awesome teachers community. I will let you introduce yourself and you have the floor now. Thank you. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be invited uh, to speak with you today and to share the work that I and my colleagues do every day. And um, yeah, to see if uh, you would be to like, if you would like to be a part of that. And um, I brought some information with me to walk you through that. Great. <laughs> yes. So to get started, this is an introduction to Coder Dojo. This is my daily life, but um, uh, obviously this is the work of uh, thousands of volunteers globally. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to share that with you today. So um, Sonia, uh, just yeah. a short a remark, because I think we see that your Zoom, uh, oh, yeah. we see some, oh. I don't know. Oh, okay, I know. Oh, I know what that is. Yes. Let me. Maybe you can share only the tab or. Is that better? Uh, oh, there are still some <laughs> showing. Oh, and we didn't have that before, right? No. 
Let's see. I know it is the black bars of um, Zoom, but um, maybe when you can, when you choose what to share, you can choose uh, only the presentation, not the whole uh, browser. Um, or yes, that was the selection. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe we can drag it to another place. Uh, now it's okay. Something, it's okay. Uh, uh, did, now we have it down. I don't know what. Yes, what's I think happening. that's as far. I think that's as far as I could drag yeah. it away. I, if but we don't have content there, I think it I, we will be. I think you should be fine. Yes. Okay, we'll give it a try. Yes. Speak Thank up you. if if you think something essential is in those corners. Yes. Thanks so much. Great. So um, today I uh, will be giving the introduction. I am the senior community manager for Coda Dojo and I'm based in Ireland. Um, I'm originally from Germany. I've lived and worked in the US uh, and now I work with global community. So I work with partners anywhere in the world. And uh, my passion is in empowering volunteers to um, bring creativity and uh, digital making to young people around the world. So I love working with teachers, with community managers, and with people that are passionate about digital making or uh, intrigued by it and looking to learn in that direction. Um, and this is only possible in, uh, yeah, in teamwork and in partnership with others like Associata Tech Soup. So I'm super pleased to be invited today and to share that. Um, and over there, so Coda Dojo is part of uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation. There you see my colleagues that work on all kinds of uh, projects, obviously not just Coda Dojo. Today, what I want to do with you is uh, introduce you to what Coda Dojo is. Um, why getting involved uh, is such a good idea for the young people in your community. Um, and then go a little bit into what does a typical dojo session look like? What kind of skills can be developed? What, what is even happening there? Um, what does it look like to start a dojo? And what kind of resources and help and support systems uh, can a volunteer or a teacher get? Um, yeah, and then how to be in touch. Before I start on this, I would love to know from you, have you heard of Coder Dojo before? And that will guide me a little bit in um, how, how intense and how detailed I might get. And Anna will help us with having a little poll. I just launched the poll. And in the meantime, I may have figured out our problem. Uh, are you sharing your presentation locally or in the uh, browser? Because I think it's a Mac brow, it's a Mac window. So maybe yeah, huh? you can go to the Google slides and pre uh, slideshow the presentation directly from there. I okay. think that will solve our issue. And until okay, then, interesting. Until then, our teachers can vote in Zoom. Excellent. You can, you can stop your uh, share screen until then. Deci, mulțumim că selectați una din opțiunile la această prima întrebare. Dacă ați mai auzit de Coder Dojo până acum. Și vom aștepta câteva secunde. Și vom lămuri și problema și situația cu ecranul. So we have. I'm not sure I can adjust this. So now you should have shared the the Google Slides and enter the preview from the browser. Or yes. We'll leave it like that. I don't know. <laughs> Because apologies, to, yeah, yes, technology to me, as I said, it's still a, a win a Mac window, but it's not no problem. Okay, I'm glad. I'm not usually on Zoom much. I usually use other platforms. So, if if you say it's doable, then let's just it's, it's, try it's this perfect. one. 
uh, I will end the poll now and I will show the results so you can also Thank see you. them. Uh, if you can confirm, you can see them. Nice. Okay. I'm seeing about, it's about half and half that uh, have heard or have not heard of it. And there are even four of you that already have a Coda Dojo in their school. That is very interesting. Wonderful. Okay. Now, um, since we have 50% uh, that have not heard of it, I will give you the entire information um, and uh, we will look at all of that. But um, yes, I'd love to later also hear input from those of you that may have some additional knowledge already. Um, great. So Kodo Dojo is a global volunteer-led movement of free not-for-profit coding clubs. We call them dojos. They're for young people aged 7 to 17. Um, and really, um, to us, it is important that we are an institution of learning, but also of having fun and being creative. Um, there is no set curriculum. Uh, in the background, we have materials that provide a curriculum, but we try to offer self-guided learning to young people in any constellation. Um, it's very important to us that we are volunteer-led and a movement. We're very inclusive. We are open to anyone. All materials that we develop are open source and they're available to anyone globally who would like to use them for learning and for supporting young people. So our mission is growing dojos around the world um, to give access to young people. Um, and uh, yeah, that is the ultimate goal. And uh, we hope to uh, get you enthusiastic about that as well, as we know you are already enthusiastic about supporting young people learn. Um, sometimes people are uh, asking a little bit about what's up with Raspberry Pi and Coder Dojo. So just a tiny bit about the history there. Um, uh, Coder Dojo used to be its own organization and has since uh, merged with the Raspberry Pi Foundation um, to have a broader reach and um, yeah, to be able to serve our mission better. So we're now embedded in a bigger program um, and are officially part of uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation but still remain our own little brand and our own little team um, supporting our volunteers in the work that they do. Right, so let's get down to the nitty gritty a little bit. Um, in Coder Dojo, uh, we call a club a dojo. So um, whenever we have a community of young people, this can be a teacher in their classroom and a volunteer, or that can be in a community center when kids come together. Um, that community and that, that group that meets over a longer period of time and that learns together and is creative together, that's what we call a dojo. Uh, ninjas is what we call the participants, all the young people that are primarily there to learn and to experiment. Uh, the dojo champion would be the person that set up the club or is the main contact for us in the foundation or the main person overseeing any activities in the dojo. And then mentors are volunteers that help out. And that can be people with um, uh, technological knowledge or backgrounds that can be parents that are coming in to help. That can be people that maybe bring cake or people that run the website or people that take care of that kids are signing up um, or that start a Facebook group. Um, there's a wide range of things. Um, a lot of people only think of mentors as the ones that will teach coding to kids. And that is obviously one important part of it, but that's not all of it. Uh, yeah, so we have a wide range of volunteers and mentors in our dojos and um, a richer community for it. This is our global community. Um, it, so we started in Ireland, uh, but it has since grown globally. Actually, our biggest community now is in Japan. 
um but it's uh, it's it's really the outreach is global we try to translate a lot of things and we try to work with each other and learn from each other um so there are some fun activities going on uh romania actually already has a, um, a fairly solid community but we are always looking to add to that and to collaborate further. Um, the idea is to keep it local, to give children the chance to um, experience this in a familiar environment um, in their own region. Uh, but then a lot of the volunteers get excited by being interconnected um, in a global movement and uh, receive peer support and um, of course, foundation support uh, on a global level. Uh, we have dojos in over a hundred countries, um, 12, more than 12,000 volunteers and more than uh, 58,000 ninjas attend each month. That's the activity level that we're seeing. So there are uh, a multitude of reasons to uh, start a dojo. So um, what we see that teachers and volunteers um, that come to us, usually they want to either share their own skills or learn new skills. And that can either be skills in, in te teaching and in pedagogy and knowing how to guide children along from one state of knowledge to another, um, or specifically in uh, coding skills, um, sharing a passion there uh, about appreciating technology and what can be done with it and in becoming more versed in dealing with the digital world that we have today. Then we have volunteers that actually they kind of want to learn coding and they uh, basically get a cohort together of others that are interested in learning. So uh, with the materials and resources that we provide through Coder Dojo, it's incredibly easy with no prior knowledge to just um, grab those and go and learn as you go along and as you guide young people along. Um, you will be giving back to your community. Um, so bringing this opportunity um, to the young people um, in your area is a big factor for a lot of people. And then as you build your community, you are uh, more likely to meet like-minded people um, and then, as I was sharing just now about the Coder Dojo movement being global, you will be joining that community of volunteers there. And in a typical dojo session, um, we have uh, like a start of icebreakers of either getting to know each other or just getting into the mindset of uh, being creative and and uh, being maybe a little less rigid than regular classes, um, depending on your teaching style, I suppose. Um, but just getting in the mindset and getting started um, for groups that are not in schools. This is also about getting to know each other a little bit better, um, as we highly encourage the kids to peer support each other as um, they go through their dojo sessions. And then the bulk of the time would be dedicated to creating cool code. And um, there we have resources, we'll look into them in a second there, um, of um, what you can do. A lot of the dojo start out with scratch projects. So um, uh, getting into block-based programming, uh, which is where you see fast results, but we have um, an entire range of resources in different aspects and different levels of expertise, I wanna say. Um, and then towards the end, we highly encourage a show and tell where the kids can just um, come up to the front or um, as you do, some do online sessions, uh, present what they have been working on during that week. Um, and that both, um, shows appreciation for the work that has been going into that week, but it also helps the kids speak up, present in front of the group, uh, be able to articulate what they are working on, also share questions they may have. Um, and we found that this is amazing for the individual as well as for the group 
to see whereabouts people are. Uh, usually this is um, a voluntary aspect of it. No one is made to present, but everyone is encouraged to do so. Um, and uh, we found it's, it's, it helps the atmosphere and it helps um, the kids in supporting each other as uh, the dojo grows over time. Um, now this is the structure that we recommend, obviously, depending on how much time you have um, or the kind of mentors you have, you can, or if you're doing it by yourself in your classroom, um, you can adjust these. Uh, there is no 100% set way of doing things. Right, let's see if this video still works. Just to give you a little bit of an impression, um, this is uh, our office and the dojo that we run there, um, just uh, to see what that can look like. So that is our dojo, and um, obviously that one is an office-based one, and um, yeah, in schools and libraries, uh, they might look a little different. Um, yeah, but that's just an impression. So uh, what we do like that all dojos bring and that um, the ninjas can profit from it is developing new skills and just... Um, uh, learning about themselves and um, yeah, becoming richer in these areas. And uh, we are not limited to wanting them to be better coders or become programmers in, in their job. Obviously, uh, a number of our ninjas do, um, but we like to um, equip them to be self-sufficient beings in a digital world in a broader sense. So we also want to develop the skills of communication, creativity and critical thinking, as well as empathy and res resilience. So it is not just about the coding activities that go on in a dojo, but it is also about a collaborative and creative approach in, in getting to this new stage of learning. So, um, we like to encourage anyone who is passionate about the same things that we are passionate about to start a dojo and become a member of our community. Uh, so we try to make that as easy as possible. Um, becoming a champion is really just making the de decision that, that you want to do that. Um, and then uh, you can gather your team. We do find a number of people um, run a dojo by themselves. But um, as it grows, um, it's really better to have other volunteers join in. Um, oftentimes, those are uh, parents of the kids um, or others in the community. Um, we do find that uh, teachers and community volunteers often um, make a good combo um, just to give it a slightly different feel than maybe um, other classroom activities. Uh, that being said, we do have a number of dojos that are run by teachers either in regular school time or after club, after school activity club times. 
uh, finding a venue if you have a store that's amazing and then uh, planning your dojo you can use the resources that we have and even the promotion um, would be school internal uh, so should be um, easier than for some people that do it in a community venue I suppose uh, nonetheless um, all of our resources are at your disposal so there are um, Kota Dojo starter packs the picture that you see there we um, we moved to online supports so um, you would get uh, digital swag and supports um, to uh, make your desktops more Kota Dojo you'd be getting uh, printout materials for um, posters and leaflets, all of those kinds of things. Um, we have a champion's handbook. That is my personal favorite uh, resource because it has everything you might ever need. So it's a short little booklet. Um, uh, and um, yeah, you can read about all aspects, best practices, a couple of examples from dojos around the world. Um, and it's also super easy to pull out little sections of whatever you are and clear about. Um, you can read up any and all of these things on our website and on our help desk. I love having a comprehensive resource when I'm like, oh, I've read this, I've read everything. Um, but I know other people like to pick and choose. So there's different options there. And then um, a real highlight is our course of starting a dojo that you can find on FutureLearn. Um, FutureLearn is a learning platform. Um, so it's a three week course. However, it's um, the whole course time is four hours. You can um, do it at your own pace, but we do like to set those three weeks so that you can learn in a cohort. There is the option of commenting, asking questions, and we're facilitating the course. So during those three weeks, we will be um, supporting and chiming in and answering all of those questions. Um, it's absolutely free. FutureLearn will try to upsell you to get a certificate. None of that is needed. You need the free version. Um, all and any materials you might ever want from Coda Dojo and that we have, we are sharing for free. So you can sign up to that at any time. We have regular runs of these three weeks at any point in time. And they're open to anyone who's interested in that teachers and anyone else. Other resources that we have um, to support beyond the core activities of actually running a dojo are the parents handbook, um, because we find um, it's not always just about the child and the educator. The parents have a big influence of how involved the child will be, how enthusiastic. Um, so getting parents on board and um, Kind of sharing with them what our approach is, why we do things the way we do, we found that very helpful. And um, in campuses that are open, this could also invite parents to be uh, mentors and support and uh, to help the group. Um, but even just getting them on board with the process is sometimes incredibly helpful. And then we have our accessibility guide. Um, that's a resource that I'm very proud of. We made that a couple of years ago, a collaboration with um, some um, volunteers in, in the university setting. Um, we want to support um, anyone in the community and make it especially easy for people that um, find that they are sometimes not included. And um, this can be a range of items. Um, so this is a lot of helpful tips and tricks on um, how to be more inviting to and, and more mindful of providing supports for either people with physical abilities, for neurodiverse uh, kids, um, for a whole range. So um, that can be a helpful resource. Um, and we found that um, clubs have profited from that before. Now, um, there are some things that are um, really open to anyone, but um, that are a great way to recognize achievement and to kind of bring special excitement to kids. Um, and that is AstroPi and Coolest Projects. So those are two events 
that run once a year and um, they are by now open to anyone uh, but we find a lot of the submissions come from the Coda Dojo community. Um, Astro Pi, so uh, the little logo you see there, so we have two uh, Raspberry Pi computers on the International Space Station and um, once a year kids get the opportunity to write code that is actually run in space. And there are two different challenges. Um, there is uh, AstroPi Zero and Mission Space Lab. AstroPi Zero is for beginners. It's um, fairly low level. It's just writing a greeting, some code. It can usually be done in one session. And uh, this is, um, yeah, this uh, will then, I mean, it will be screened to make sure it is all okay. Um, and then it will run in space and kids will get a certificate um, a, and will be informed about where the International Space Station was at the exact point that their space ran in code. It's very, very cool. And um, yeah, I think we've just concluded um, a cycle. Um, and Mission Space Lab is much more advanced. So it's quite the jump up. Um, it's for advanced coders and it requires writing an actual pro um, project proposal of um, yeah, scientific exploration. Um, and um, yeah, kids, it's usually run in groups, um, will be asked to write up um, yeah, an experiment proposal. And um, it's uh, quite interesting what all can be seen there. It's a lot of environmental issues that are being tackled, a lot of um, photography from space and so on and so forth. Um, and Coolest Projects is a showcase for anyone that's uh, creative with technology. Um, we are very mindful in saying it's a showcase, it's not a competition. We want everyone to be able to participate and to showcase what they have been working on that year there's different categories about what kind of projects people are working in so scratch is the most popular um but there's also games and websites and apps and so on and so forth uh there's robotics things um and it's mind-blowing uh what kind of things kids work on so we ask them to pick a real life situation or challenge and um to improve the situation through coding um, so, and some people will run fun little games, um, other people will design a facial recognition doorbell for their grandma who has Alzheimer's. Um, it's really quite touching, um, the kind of stuff you see in it. So that is definitely a personal highlight of myself every year. And we encourage every kid that's in a Coda Dojo to take part. So in, um, we use the Coda Dojo platform, we call it Zen, um, to showcase where, where there are dojos. So if you go to our website, you will be able to look up any dojo that's out in the world. Um, uh, so any kid around the world can see if there is a local dojo, if not, what can, they can do to get one started. Um, that only works, volunteers actually put their information up there. Um, so for people that run open clubs, they can set up ticketed events, manage the attendance numbers, um, uh, promote their dojo. There's then an easy link to find the projects, um, all of these kinds of things. Now, I have shared a whole number of things with you. Um, I would like to know, and Anna will guide us through another poll here. Um, How's your interest level in having a Coda Dojo in your school in the next school year? Yes, I have launched the poll. I hope you can see it. Ah, yes. Popped up now. So basically, uh, dacă doriți după tot ce v-a povestit uh, Sonia, dacă um, ați dori să începeți un club Coder Dojo în școala dumneavoastră sau în comunitatea dumneavoastră, Mi-ar plăcea să, să, ne, să ne spuneți prin acest uh, mix cod sondaj. We are getting responses. Sonia, they are very attentive, our teachers, 
and active also in the chat. We will wait a few more seconds because I see they're clicking and clicking. <laughs> I think you can also see, but uh, it's nice to mention we have 300 and a little bit more teachers uh, joining us live. So wow, that's an impressive number. We are very grateful for that number of participants because it's summer and a lot of teachers are already in vacation in uh, the, the, their summer holidays. So it means a lot for us that they joined. It's the same here in Ireland. Everyone it's already taken off as of around last weekend. So um, yeah, it's quite special to get a little time together here. I will end the poll now, uh, but anyone who could, uh, who wants to answer in the chat is also welcome. I am sharing now the results, Sonia, if you can see them. Oh, wow. That's a great level of interest. Wonderful. Okay, I'm getting a um, hundred people, about half of you that are quite interested. Uh, the other half is not quite sure. Uh, three were brave enough to say no. Which is absolutely okay um but yeah i'm blown away by that level of interest that's wonderful um and let's look into what that would mean um so we'll do one uh, little other um round of things that are available so whether you start a coder dojo or whether you do other activities i do want to highlight the resources that we have that you can use in either surrounding. Um, so if you go to the website dojosoy slash CD projects, so a project is what we call a project is basically a step-by-step -step guide um, for kids or adults, really, I do them, uh, to um, uh, go through a coding project and then have a result at the end. And uh, through that guided learning, learn new skills that they can then use um, to realize uh, their own digital projects. Um, we have those for Scratch, Python, HTML, CSS, as well as Raspberry Pi and hardware projects. Um, the newest ones that we have are in Unity. There are a couple Minecraft ones. Um, they are for all levels for beginners to more advanced kids. We try to mark them and uh, we have, I'll come to that next. Uh, there are translations available. Um, Romanian is quite limited. I think there are some, but it is quite limited. Um, yeah, that is what I can say about translations. Um, this is an example of a project. So on the left, you have a nifty little overview of what kind of steps are coming your way. And then in the main body, you have um, in usually fairly simple English, um, the instructions of um, what you're trying to achieve and how you can get there. Sometimes there are screenshots or, or little GIFs of how that works. It is possible to get a print version of uh, printing it out, uh, but the interactive one would be online if you have two windows. Um, and I will say something else. We do have now something that's called Pathways, where we have grouped projects together. Um, those Pathways um, always have six projects that build on each other. The first three projects are just like I explained. They will teach something. And then there are two projects that explore the same concepts, again, that are a little more loose but they use the same kind of skills from that, that were picked up during the first three. And then the sixth project is aimed to be um, quite free and creative. It's a design project where all those skills are supposed to be put to the test or given the opportunity to express that. Um, and those are quite nice because um, they give educators a clear list of skills that will be covered. Whereas most of the Coder Dojo is quite free and we let kids pick whatever they want to work on for the pathways. It is fairly easy to line that up with curriculum or learning expectations uh, that you might have for the kids in your class. 
Yeah, uh, registering a dojo is uh, super easy. You go to dojo.soystart or you go to the Kodo Dojo website and uh, click on starting a dojo. Um, getting registered there, uh, my lovely colleague Helen or any of uh, my other lovely team members um, will um, verify the dojo and then you are free to run um, your club. You will get uh, sent the starter pack and all kinds of materials that you might need um, and become part of the community. Right, now I did save a little time uh, for any questions you might have, anything you might wanna hear more about, or in fact, if you have a uh, dojo knowledge, anything you want to share uh, back with me or uh, the other ones on this call. Yes, Sonia, we do have questions. They are, they are uh, coming as we speak and I have already a list. So if you're ready, Perfect. I'm going yes. to to launch some questions maybe um yes we, we maybe if you feel uh, okay with it you can sh uh, stop sharing your screen but it's up to you so we have a good, good or yes. better one so uh first question let's say we have a, a, a color dojo club in our school um what would you say it, it's a best practice or how the do other color dojos do uh, do the school does the school provide uh, provides the laptops and computers or do the students bring them from home so what about yeah. these resources um we see both actually so um we, yes um it, yeah it depends on what your school has if, if there is a computer lab absolutely use a computer lab that's easiest we find that um a lot of times kids like to bring their own laptop because then they can also save their projects on it a lot of them like um, to work on it at home as well. And that might be easier because not all of it um, can be online. But we also have coder dojos that run completely offline that don't have access to computers um, where the, yeah, uh, where, where they just can't and they, they do computational thinking. Of course, that's much more limited. Ideally, every kid has access to a computer. Um, yeah, and the last, thing where there's no computer lab um, I've had schools work with uh, local businesses to actually use business premises uh, so basically bus the kids to an office um, to use computers on other premises uh, but still as a as a school group those are the ones I know of Thank you. Um, another question related to how many Coder dojo, dojo clubs can be in one school? Ah, that is an excellent question. Um, yeah, yeah, that's uh, how you define it. Usually we would have um, one per school. However, it's really, um, uh, however many set distinct groups there are, it's about the community building and the community with each other. So really, if you have a set of volunteers and kids and a second set of volunteers and kids in the school, if, if those are, are separate, they're doing their own thing, I would say there's no limit to the number of dojos you can have in a school. Um, so, um, but in the end, it doesn't matter what, what you register, it's whether you give kids the opportunity to be creative with, with code. So um, whichever way we approach it, it's fine with me. Can there be multiple uh, coordinators, teacher coordinators in one Coder Dojo club? Oh, absolutely. Yes, we highly recommend working as a team, uh, training off, having active period. Yes, absolutely. Oh, what is the age um, recommended to start uh, the first Dojo uh, at the kids' age? So when can the kids be involved in their first Dojo? So really our materials start at quite the beginner level so really as of the time they can read we say 7 to 17 um in reality i would say uh or most kids are around 10 so we had uh, coolest projects recently and i just saw the result the, the median age of kids that submitted projects was 10 but the range was from under six to 18. Teachers asked us um, if uh, they 
uh, they must be the only volunteers in a Kodor Dojo Club or who else can they bring to uh, do all the activities in the school? Yeah, um, I've seen, uh, again, I've seen all kinds of things. So uh, sometimes it's just a teacher. If a teacher is confident, they can just do it. Run. They, you don't have to coordinate with anyone. You can just grab a go do it. However, sometimes it's it's fun or it's great. Either you're not as confident with technology or you feel like, oh, this is a great excuse to get someone else. Um, so f you can find community volunteers. You can get parents of kids to help. Um, we absolutely have it that that Coder Dojos run at a specific time in the week and that a volunteer specifically comes in to help during that um, time period. Yeah. Thank you. Um... One specific question, can children start to join a dojo on summer vacation without any supervising? So basically the question I think it's about when do the activities of the Coder Dojo happen? During school time, extra curriculum, in extra? So we like for Coder Dojos to be um, a fixture in the child's life. So we don't like for it to be just two weeks summer camp. We, we like it to be an ongoing opportunity to develop. So usually it is during term time, during school time. Um, but um, yeah, no, that's usually it. Um, and then I would say it's 50-50 for those that do it during um, regular school time or the other 50% as an after school club, I would say. Thank you. Uh, this, uh, the answer of, uh, for this question um, you can also find in the course because we have two best practices from two teachers in our community that already are doing a lot of amazing Coder Dojo activities. So please make sure all teachers watching now that you also watch those videos and a lot more questions will be answered by our two awesome teachers. Thank you. Another question for you, Sonia. Can we use all the Coder Dojo materials and Raspberry Pi materials if we don't have a Coder Dojo club? Yes, yes, you can. I mean, we love for you to have a dojo, but um, we explicitly made the decision not to limit it. Like we, a couple of years back was the big decision. Do we put this behind a registration wall or not? And we made the explicit decision not to. We have everything open source. Um, we love for you to use the material so you can use one project, you can use all of them, you can use our volunteer materials, you can use the actual products, um, as long as you use them to support your young learners, we love for you to do so. Thank you for this uh, encouragement and all the resources you provide. Um, one question regarding Kula's project. Someone asked, when will Kula's projects take place in physical format? So maybe you can explain. Yes, format. absolutely. Um, so it, so Kula's projects, I feel like this is a question from someone who's been or who has seen it. So um, I will start with the history. It used to uh, take place once a year in Dublin in Ireland and people from around the world were invited. Um, now with the pandemic, we've moved it to an online showcase. And we've had an overwhelming success or like it, it's just been so wonderful to see that it was so much more accessible to um, global participation. Um, so we have tweaked our approach a little bit. So there, from here on in, there will be an online showcase, which will be the global event once a year. Additionally, there will be national events. So there will be a national Irish one that might be very big, but there will probably also be ones in the UK and the US that we run as a foundation. And then partners of ours also run national events in other countries. So this year we've seen it in Belgium. There will be one in Malaysia, one in South Africa. And um, those are just the ones that I know of. Sonia, until, so I think we answered all the questions, but if we skipped any or missed any, they can write to us or they can reach out to the Coder Dojo communities. 
thank you again, Sonia, for, from my side and all the TechSoup team. Again, thank you all to all, to all participants, to all teachers for uh, attending all or some of our meetings. And a kind reminder that the recording of this webinar, this meeting will be available in the online course and uh, all other resources shared by Sonia. So thank you again, Sonia. Any last um, remarks? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it, yeah, it's wonderful to be able to uh, share about our mission. Um, I'd love uh, to see any and all of you around in our community. And uh, please do send me any questions and check out our materials. We genuinely uh, love for them to be helpful to educators and volunteers around the world. Thank you again. Goodbye and hope to see you at the finish line of the online course. Bye bye.